Hallelujah. My hair's kind of fluffy tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's so vain. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on in. Come on in in the room. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on in. God is changing your story. And I pray that he's going to be changing your story tonight. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I am so looking forward to God doing something spectacular. Okay, my thing don't want to act right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, Lordy. I may have frozen there a little bit. I hope not. God is changing your story. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on in. Come on in the room. God is changing your story. I pray tonight that God is changing your story. That you don't have to worry about nothing else but Jesus. Hallelujah. Because that's what it's about. It's about Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, God, for changing the story, Lord. Believe it. You better believe it. You better receive it. Yay! Hallelujah, Lord. He's changing your story. Ooh, I know he's changing my story. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Greetings, Kimmy. God bless you, sis. Who else did I? I just missed somebody. God bless you, evangelist, prophetess, bishop. Um. <laughs> Glory to God. Woman of God, Jackie, stamps on my page. I feel awesome in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I got to get my life here. I know God is good. So come on in. Invite your friends. Invite your followers. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessings, Jacqueline. <laughs> Jackie. Did I call all the ladies out? Minister. Oh, uh, psalmist. Uh, minister of minstrel music. Come on, Jesus. Come on. Anyway, to God be the glory. All of you are children of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God is changing your story. God is changing your story, even right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you, Karen. He's changing my story right now. I'm so excited about what God is doing in this hour. I'm excited about the word on tonight. Glory to God. We also will be on um, YouTube, uploading to YouTube. So when you upload to YouTube, subscribe, like, share, hit the notification bell. So you'll know when we're on. Notification always, you always want to know, because you want to know what the Lord is saying. Tonight, I am looking forward to God to do something great. And as usual, we're going to walk through the Bible. So come on in and let's give God glory. Come on in, let's share this thing. Let's share the word. Let's not be stingy. Come on, let's share the word. Come on, let's share the word. Hallelujah. Let's not be stingy tonight. Come on. Hallelujah. He's changing your story. Yes, Lord. Hey, 
Yeah, he's changing your story. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so excited. I don't know why I always look like I'm asleep. <laughs> but God is so good. God is so awesome. He is doing it for me. And he's doing it for you. Glory to God. Sadness won't be your story no more. Sickness won't be your story no more. Lack won't be your story no more. Pain from the past won't be your story no more. I'm here to I'm here to, to, to encourage you that it won't be your story no more. Glory to God. Your enemies will be trampled. So your enemies are, that are taking you down, it won't be your story no more. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come on, y'all. Let's praise him right now. Come on, hit those hearts and begin to praise him. Come on, hit those hearts and begin to give him glory. Come on, hit those hearts and know that God is in the building. In the name of Jesus. Oh, he's worthy to be praised. Woo! I'm on char I'm charged up today. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. Come on. Come on. Let him know that your story is going to change. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He is great and greatly to be praised. We honor him on today. I thank you all for coming and spending this time with me. Hallelujah. For spending this time with me in Jesus' name. <laughs> okay, Kim, you, know, you prophesy on the God, cause you about to. I, I got to get through this live. You, you, I'm gonna be. Da, 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 da. That's all, folks. <laughs> Before I even get started, to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Um, God is just so awesome tonight. He's so awesome tonight. Again, thank you all so much for taking the time to spend with me. On this evening, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, in Jesus' name, yes, Lord, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, glory to God, glory to God. <sighs> God is so good. Let's just, for a second, let's just, let's just love on him. Let's just love on him. Let's love on Elohim. Just for a few minutes before we get started. I want the Holy Spirit to be my teacher. I want the Holy Spirit to be the one that leads. I want the Holy Spirit to come in. So I just want you to take a few minutes and I want just a, a, a half a minute and I want you to begin to glorify him. I want you to begin to glorify him. Just, just right there. Hallelujah. We're going to blast the enemy out of this place. I'll be right back. Just stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spirit, and you coming in with extra stuff. 
I can't do this without him. I have to welcome him into the room. I can't do this without him. Come into the room, Lord. Hallelujah. Hello, hello. God bless you, Henry. Welcome. I welcome you all into the room tonight. Kotola kapaka tiki tati antara dorosa, rama sikatani kitu daka bakata ta, lerosa kama siketamaku. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, basa. He is in the atmosphere. Hallelujah, tama sikata. Hana masiketana noshi. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, as we go forth, God, to you, the first thing I ask, God, is that you forgive me for every sin, God. I repent of the sins I may have done knowingly and unknowingly from even earlier today, God. Every thought that I subjected to the enemy that says I can't when I know that I can, by your grace, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Lord, touch my eyes, my ears. Touch my mouth, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable to you, O oh God. Lord, touch the people's ears, Lord. Let them ha have ears here, God. For tonight, I will be traveling through the word, God, as usual as your request per your request, God. Lord, I pray that someone gets saved, someone gets changed, someone recommits themselves tonight if they've lost their way to let them know, God, and even though they may have done something five minutes, five seconds ago, Lord, that even now that they hear my voice, God, they can still change it. And they will not go back to their old ways, oh God. God. Deliver them, God, out of the wicked places of the evil one. Lord, deliver them out of the wicked places of their flesh, oh God. That their flesh will stop opening up doors that you have closed, oh God. Lord, that they will allow you to move how you say you will move and do as you say do, God. And be careful to obey your commandments in the word. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, Lord, I ask you to just touch them, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, that they will sit down and the Holy Spirit will sit on them, God. That they will rise up into a greater purpose in you, God. No matter what yesterday looked like, no matter what this morning looked like, to know that if they're in the right form, if they're in the right worship, if they're walking holy, God, they are doing it for you, God. Though some of us, Lord, we love you so much and we just cry out for you. We want to do much for you, God. We want to have tent revivals. We want to have prayer revivals. We want to have prayer conferences, God. But yet, we get torn down and defeated when well, we must remember God as a people that you already defeated the terror you already you already defeated God the terror God 
So we are the wheat that's left over. We are good stuff, God. Where the enemy tried to sift us. Lord, I thank you right now, God. Let this word of my mouth go forth, God. You lead the way, God. Let your people be changed suddenly, God. That they will no longer walk in a different way of you, God. But they'll walk in the same direction, God. Knowing that you have made their crooked path straight in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just thank you right now, God, for you are glorious and amazing. Lord, I can't do this without you, Lord. I am just a vessel, God. Lord, if I am in the way, move me out of the way, God. I will decrease so you can increase, God. Lord, if I'm walking in a, a, a footstep, God, that you have not set up for me an assignment, God, please let me know and let me do it, God. Let me move it speedily out of the way, oh God, because it's your will and not my will be done. So, Lord, let the people see, hear, God, taste, and know that you are good, that you are great, and you are worthy to be praised. Lord, I just thank you right now, Father. I glorify your name, God, because you are mighty and amazing, God, a wonderful God. Lord, let your glory fall fresh on me, God, in the name of Jesus. There was a man that said, uh, uh, Pastor Lonnie that said, I follow the cloud and not the crowd. Lord, today let them understand they cannot follow the crowd because the crowd can lead them into a bad place. But if they follow the cloud, the cloud can't lead them to nothing but good things. It can't lead them nothing but to heaven. He can only lead them to greater places. He can lead them to freedom. In Jesus' name, I thank you, oh God, for saturating this atmosphere and allowing me to move and breathe on your behalf. I'm so honored and humble, God. So, Lord, as I share this with their friends, God, that need the word, God, let them understand that they need to research it, God, as well as know that I am a child of God and what comes out of me is God. So, Lord, I glorify you tonight and I honor you in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, let's honor him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. So, God bless you. God bless you on tonight. I thank you for coming on with me. Tonight is going to be awesome. <clears throat> Last week, we talked about the deceiver. The deceiver. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tonight, we're talking about keep going. You are going to the den. Keep going because you are going to the den. And I bet you can understand where the den is when I go through these, these scriptures. Keep going because you are going to the den. So tonight we're going to minister Daniel in the den. And how that, how that affects your life. And even my life. Hallelujah. So we're going to go through Daniel uh, 6, 1 through 10. And then we're going to go through Daniel 6, 16 to 28. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, ooh, I feel God, y'all. That's why I'm slow motion starting. I feel God. I feel God. I feel God. Hallelujah. I feel God. I feel God. Hallelujah. I feel God. Hallelujah. I feel him. Mm. Just give me a second. I feel God. I feel God. Mm. Mm. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. So, Daniel 6, 1 through 10. Darius reorganized his kingdom. He appointed 120 governors to administer all the parts of his realm. Over them were three vice regents, one of whom was Daniel. The governors reported to the vice regents who made sure everything was in order for the king. But Daniel, brimming with spirit and intelligence, so completely outclassed the other vice regents and governors that the king decided to put him in charge of the whole kingdom. Wow. How about that? Out and and the word I'm looking at is outclassed. Um I mean out that's class. That that surpasses all everything. That's superior. That's better than. That's outshine. That's overshadowed. That's eclipsed. I mean, it's just powerful. But the thing was, is class. It's done in class. Class, class, class. I know my, I think my internet is messing, but I'm going to keep going. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. The vice regents and governors, four to five, the vice regents governor got together to find some old scandal or skeleton in Daniel's life that they could use against him. But they couldn't dig up anything. He was totally exemplary and trustworthy. How many of you that people try to look up stuff to defame you? <clears throat> they try to find something wrong with you. They try to find something wrong with you. And when they do, they try to set you up, make you mad, upset you, and, and get you to act in some other kind of way. But sometimes you fall for it. <laughs> sometimes you fall for that, and then you like, okay, I'm done, I'm quitting, I give up, and why? If you're doing it for the kingdom, why give up? If you're doing it for God, why give up unless you are doing something dirty? They can find no evidence of neglect, neglect, negligence or misconduct. So they finally gave up and said, we're never going to find anything against Daniel unless we can scheme up something religious. Wow. Wow. They was looking at his background, and his background didn't say nothing terrible, but they wanted to find something religious. How many of you, if somebody dug up something on you, that they'll find some, some religious nut? <laughs> That's what they call you. That's what they call us. Religious Jesus freaks, Jesus nuts, whatever. And they want to doubt, they want to just take you out. It's about standing up for who God is. Staying in the battle, staying, staying in the race, not giving up, not giving in. To the vice regents and governors conspired together and then went to the king and said, King Darius, live forever. We've convened your vice regents, governors, and all your leading officials and have agreed that the king should issue the following decree. For the next 30 days, mm, the next 30 days, the next 30 days, come on, y'all, the next, come on, everybody, the next, come on, say the next 30 days, the next 30 days, I go to side. I hear the Lord that say that somebody need to fast in the next 30 days, the next 30 days, I hear somebody need to pray more, somebody need to worship more, somebody need to get closer to God more, and for the, in the next 30 days, because what God is about to do is bless your whole heart, hallelujah, with his limitless grace in the next 30 days, I hear that so strong in my spirit, your next 30 days, so within your next 30 days, 
Keep your mouth out of negative things. Keep your mouth from complaining in the next 30 days. You catch yourself complaining, start giving God glory. If you give God glory when you complain, I bet you you give God glory every day and all day in Jesus' name. For the next 30 days, something great, spectacular is going to happen in your life in the next 30 days. I don't know why that's so heavy on me, but begin to walk in it. Begin to fast in it in Jesus' name. So, Lord, what is for my next in the next 30 days in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I prophesy oil over you. I prophesy freedom over you. I prophesy greater things over you in the next 30 days. God said the main thing though is to be obedient to my will. When I ask you to do something or not do something, do it or not do it because the next 30 days counts depends on you and your will for me. I've given you a free will. What will you use it for? What will you do with it in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. The next 30 days, your next oil, your next greatness, your next great place. Hallelujah. Your next book. Come on. Your next financial overflow. Hallelujah. In the next 30 days, I feel it so heavy in me in Jesus' name. I take it so serious. The next 30 days. Hallelujah. You may want to get off of social media in the next 30, within the next 30 days, whether it's five days, three days, seven days, or all 30 days in Jesus' name. It's something about that 30 days. Glory to God. God is working tonight. Trying to get through this word is going to be woo, glory to God. So for they said that there's, this is their decree. For the next 30 days, no one is to pray to any God or mortal except you. O oh, king, anyone who disobeys will be thrown into the lion's den. My Lord, you keep going because you are going into the den. And we'll get together, we'll get even closer on why that is so. Issue this decree. O oh, king, this is verse 8. O oh, king, and make it unconditional. As if written in stone, like all the laws of Medes and Persians, King Darius signed the decree. When Daniel learned that the decree had been signed and posted, he continued to pray just as he always done. His house had windows in the upstairs that opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day, he knelt there in prayer, thanking and praising his God. How many of you still continue to praise God when something goes wrong? Or how many of you just fall by the wayside and say, well, uh, he said he was coming, but I don't believe him. Glory to God. And I'm sorry, y'all, that was the message Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So now we get ready to go to the uh, New American Standard Bible. I told you I have a lot of Bibles. Uh, the Life Application Study Bible. Oh God, that next 30 days is so heavy. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So let's go here. 6, 16 to 28. In the NASB. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about it. <clears throat> Glory to God. Now, so far, what we know is the people didn't like Daniel because he thought he was, they thought, they thought that he thought that he was a goody two-shoes, that uh, he prayed to the Lord. They, they didn't care about the prayer to the Lord yet until they couldn't find nothing else wrong. And when they couldn't find nothing else wrong, then they, they, they decided to go deeper. See, the thing about it is, <clears throat> when we have moral, when we have things that are more important than God, and people start to try to take those things from us without us even realizing that, when you read the Bible, the, Bible, the Lord said, I will return to you, you recompense. Hallelujah. <laughs> I recompense you of everything that you've lost, things that you probably don't even deserve, but I'm still going to give it back to you because of his grace. 
Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so when they couldn't find nothing wrong with him, they was digging into his worship. They was digging of the thing that's most precious to him. What is precious to you? What is more precious to you? If a tornado came through your place and tore everything in sight except you, what at that point is more precious to you? It should be the life that God gave you. The fact that you're still standing. When everything crumples around you, when, when the enemy try to find everything wrong with your past and try to dig it up and just make you look like you are just the worst human being that ever lived and try to take it and twist it and turn it and all of this stuff, when they got, look, these people got stuff in their background. And they don't care nothing about no plank in, in the, uh, speck in their eye and plank in your eye. I don't care. All they want to do is accuse you. All they want to do is tear you down. But when your worship is greater than the things around you, you have a greater chance for God to overflow you and bless you. So Daniel 6, 16 to 28, verse 16 then the king gave orders, and Daniel was brought in and cast into the lion's den. The king spoke and said to Daniel, your, your God, whom you constantly serve, will himself deliver you. Now, he made a statement. Hallelujah. Mm. He made a statement. And his law could not be broken. But I want to break laws that tell me I can't praise God. I'm going to worship him. I'm going to glorify his name. I'm going to let the whole world know that you are God and God alone. And I will not be defeated because God, you already have taken care of me. So then, verse 17, a stone was brought and laid over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet rings of his nobles, that nothing would, would be changed in regard to Daniel. So Daniel wasn't about to change that. So let's go. I have five points. Well, I have four tonight. One. You know you have you know you have persecutors, don't you? Why do we act like when somebody when we have a worship life, let's put it that way. When we really have a worship life in the Lord, when we really have a worship life in the Lord, when we really read our Bible, when we really know who God is, when we really know um, that God has uh, set, set us free by, by dying on the cross for our sins and then getting up three days later as he promised. But we know that you, you know you have persecutors, don't you? Jesus had persecutors, so why not you? When you have persecutors... Do you quit when they're deceitful against you and attempt to destroy you because you are humbly skilled at what you do and you are at high demand? My God, do you quit? I have heard people uh, in different, a different social media platform, they want to quit and say, Oh, I'm quitting because too many people are against me and too much stuff is too much junk and too much da-da-da. But what are you there for? Are you actually on the right assignment? Should you even be in there? Should you wait on the Lord? Or should you just be of good courage and know that God has already defeated them? And, and, and the enemy come against you because of the glory in you. Come on. Yes, Lord. Because of the glory that is in you, that's why the enemy is coming after you. Sometimes God will handle it and sometimes he'll allow it. Because trials and tribulations, trials and tribulations in James, it says it over, read it over and over again. Keep it in your mind. Trials and tribulations, they come. But they come to make you strong. So for Daniel, this was a trial and tribulation going into the den. 
but that didn't stop him. He had persecutors. Number two, I want you to think about something. Why do you give up so easily when God is in control and you know he'll work it out? Some of you give up way too quickly. Because you want things to be right then. You want it to be easy. You want it to be simple. And some things are. Some things you can go through life and it just be a smooth breeze. But watch this. Those who go to smooth breeze forget about praising God and therefore you hit a wall. Why? Because you forgot about God in your smooth breeze. You didn't give him glory throughout it. You didn't give him glory throughout your smooth breeze. As Daniel gave God glory when things were going well for him. God gave, God gave, uh, uh, Daniel gave God his glory. And then when thing, when his persecutors were coming for him, he didn't, he didn't worry about them because he knew that God was the one he served. Glory to God. So then King went off to his palace and spent the night fasting and no entertainment was brought before him and his sleep fled from him. So how many people will pray and fast on your behalf? Mm. You got to have a certain amount of people in your circle that will pray and fast on your behalf. Or join in with you when you're going through some things. Keep pushing. Keep going. Because you're going into the den. You are going into the den. Then the king rose at dawn at the break of day and went into haste into the lion's den. When he had come near the den to Daniel, he cried out with a troubled voice. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Daniel, servant of God, servant of the living God, Daniel, what do you want God? I want people to call me Hope, Hope, daughter of the living God, Hope, woman of God. Woman of the living God. Jesus. Has your God whom you constantly serve been able to deliver you from the lions? Mm -mm -mm. Has it? Or will you get chewed up? And, and I mean, he called the man out. He called out his name. You know what lions are? You wouldn't go near one without a shotgun. <laughs> Not even a tour guide is going to help you if he get e eaten up really quickly. I've seen lions perch. Ready to get their prey. Ready to devour. Sneaking their way around. They don't even know he's coming. They're having a good day in, in, in eating. They're having a good day in drinking. They're having a good day. Hallelujah, the sun is right where it's supposed to be. And this lion is perched. And the minute their back is turned, the minute they're not paying attention, the minute they got so comfortable in where they are, the lion is seeking to devour you. So, a lion in a den automatically is just hungry. It's just going to attack you. So, number three. What can unbelievers and believers alike determine about who you actually are versus who you say you are based on your real life? Not your evangelistic or the pulpit life. And or the pulpit life. Are they separate or are they the same? I want you to think about that. I want you to think about it. Let me ask that question again for the people in the back. I really want you to think about your life because I have to do that. I have to say, okay, Lord, I minister to these people every week. 
I minister to people throughout the day if I, if I run across them. I, I pray for people. Okay, what does my life look like? My life has to look like worship because it's no good. The people I minister to can go to heaven and I'll still be left behind. But you want people to see you and you give a great performance. But who are you behind the scenes? What can unbelievers and believers alike determine about who you actually are versus who you say you are based on your real life, not your evangelistic and or pulpit life. Are they separate or are they the same? We know we go through things every day. Yes, we get tested every day. Somebody is getting tested, right? Somebody's family member may have COVID. Their faith is getting tested. You may get COVID. Your faith is getting tested. Will you enter into the lion's den? Remember, keep going because you're going into the den. Your your somebody may turn their back on you, or somebody you thought you had a good spiritual relationship with, all of a sudden y'all don't even have a conversation anymore. Or somebody you thought that would pray for you, and obviously they don't like you no more because what you're doing is not where they're going. Where you're going is not where they're going. I don't know what this is for, but where you're going, they're not going with you. You can pray for them. You can minister, hope that they get on your platform to listen, but don't even, if you concern yourself with them, the lion will devour you. Because it's not about you. It's about God and his glory. And what the glory of God can do for you, on you, in you. Don't even let family tear you apart. Because family will tear you up. You pray for them. You keep them safe in the arms of Jesus, but you don't let them distract you. You don't let them distract you. Daniel did not let these people and their 30-day notice distract him from who God was. And he was, they said, when well, you are going into the den, he knew the rules. He knew the rules. He knew the rules. The rules are not no praying in 30 days. He's like, no, I'm going to sacrifice for the Lord, not for you. He's the one doing it for me. So keep going. You're going into the den. But when you go into the den, are you coming back out? Number four, are you Daniel or are you the conspirators and their families? Meaning, are you as yourself? Are you committed to Jesus under hater conditions? Or are you a wimp when people try to destroy you? Keep going because you're going into the den. I'm Daniel. No matter what people are doing to me, I must continue to worship. Even, in, even when it hurts, I've got to continue to go into praise. I've got to continue to say, God, you are everything to me. God, it don't matter about their voices. It doesn't matter. Uh, he sent Ezekiel out and he told Ezekiel, do not be afraid of their faces because I'm giving you a word to give to them. Don't worry about them. You worry about going to heaven and you keep on preaching and you keep on praying. You keep on ministering. You don't stop. You don't give in in Jesus' name and you keep going forward in Jesus' name and God will protect you. Keep going because you're going into the den. And when you get into the den, are you Daniel or are you the conspirators and their families? Are you allowing them to get you ripped into shreds? Or are you allowing God to do what God does and subdue the lions, subdue your enemies? He said in the Bible, vengeance is mine. It belongs to the Lord, not you. And his reward, him still being there, he they gave him the greatest position in the land. 
And God wants to give you a greater position in the land. So, are you Daniel within yourself? Are you the conspirators and their families? Are, are you going to get, they, he threw the family into the den. Oh, glory to God. So when he asked Daniel, servant of the living God, as your God whom you constantly serve, and he, hear that, he said constantly, we must be constant, pray without ceasing, worship constantly, have been able to deliver you from the lions. Then Daniel spoke to the king. Eh! Woo! O king, live forever. Jesus, Jesus, my God. In verse 22, my God sent his angel. How about that? God sent you an angel. When you got the conspirators coming up, when you got these people coming up against you, God is going to protect you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Why? Because he's with you. He sent angels to minister to you. He's watching over you constantly. So don't stop worshiping. Just stay with the Lord God. So in verse 22, he said, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth. Oh, that's so powerful. And they have not harmed me in as much as I was found innocent before him. And also towards you, O king, I have committed no crime. Jesus. Then the king was very pleased and gave the orders for Daniel to be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury whatsoever was found on him because he had trusted in his God. See, a lot of us, we quit, right? Or we take it on ourselves. And because we feel like God is not working as fast as we want to, our flesh opens doors. It opens evil doors. It opens uh, rebellion doors. It opens witchcraft doors. It opens lack doors. It opens just destroying door doors, it opens them up. But he wasn't in his flesh. Daniel was in the spirit realm with the Lord. When Daniel, can you imagine Daniel in the tomb in the spirit realm with the Lord? You too can be in the spirit realm with the door, Lord. And he will shut the mouths of the devourer. But you got to believe, you got to have faith, and you got to keep doing it every single day. Every day. If you go into a weight room, and you just say, oh, well, I'm strong from last, from last, uh, from three months ago, because I just did a, a Miss Weight America, whatever they call it, um, you know, contest, or I was just in the gym, so I'm gonna go ahead. I was doing 50, I'm sure I can do 55. You go in there and you break your neck. No, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta say, Well, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me start just a little bit lower, try to see where I'm at. Let me get it going. So, but if you did it every day after your uh, uh, muscle America, whatever, if you kept going. You wouldn't have to go into the gym uh, if you missed a week and say, oh, Lord, what, you know, I'm going something too high and break your neck. Why? Because you're constant. You have to stay constant. You have to stay focused on God. You got to stay worship. You got to stay in worship. You got to stop. Stop quitting. Stop listening to those voices that mean you no good. You want to hear him say, good and well done, thy faithful servant. Well done. So because Daniel had trusted God, he took care of him. Then 24, verse 24, we're in chapter 6 verse of Daniel, verse 24. The king then gave orders and they brought 
those men who had maliciously accused Daniel and cast them and their children and their wives, my God, into the lion's den. They had not reached the bottom of the den before the lions overpowered them and crushed their bones. That's it. Stay focused. You got to stay focused. He's waiting. He is waiting for your flesh to jack up. And sometimes he'll just come in there and do it himself and you just allow it to happen because you're not focused on Christ. You're not submerged in the things of God. Verse 25, then Darius the king wrote to all the peoples, nations, and men of every language who are living in all the land, may your peace abound. Now, he wrote it, but that sounds like a tent revival to me. God is calling a revival today. That resurgence that I that I uh, ministered, uh, that um, uh, Evangelist Candace had put on, that's still blessing my life. There's a resurgence. There's a revival that has to happen right now. Let the revival come. Let Jesus come. Let the glory come. I call the glory to sit upon you now in Jesus' name. The glory will hit your house so heavenly that all of a sudden, Lord Abba it's more than a sprinkle. It's like somebody knocking over fire hydrogen and the water just shoots through the air and the glory just shoots through your air and the glory just over Take your whole household in Jesus' name. The glory is getting ready to do something in your life. But you've got to keep walking in him. You've got to be in faith in him. You've got to trust his strength in him. you got to understand that he can take it. He can devour, hallelujah, your enemies on your behalf. you just got to believe in Jesus. And you've got to stay right there. Hold up, oh Shatai. And 26, I will make a decree in all dominion of my kingdom. Men are to fear and tremble before God of Daniel. Tremble. Tremble. Tremble with fear. Keep going because you're going in the den. Keep on going for the Lord because you're going in the den. Keep going because you're going in the den. Keep going. For he is a living God, enduring and enduring forever. And his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. His dominion will be forever. And 27. He delivers and rescues and performs signs and wonders in heavens and the earth. Who has also delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this... Daniel enjoyed success and reign of Darius in the reign of Cyrus and Persia. So you can reign too. Why? Because he's the king of kings. Finally, do you realize no matter what you do, if you don't stay focused in or submitted to Jesus and know what to do to save yourself, you will die. You will die. If Daniel didn't stay submitted to Jesus, if Daniel didn't stay submitted to Jesus, if Daniel did not stay submitted to the Lord, because we know Jesus and the Lord and the Holy Spirit are as one, if Daniel didn't stay submitted to the Lord, he would have died. If you don't want to die today, submit and surrender your life. If you keep your mind stayed on him, you will be in overflow, more than a conqueror. Your cup shall run over. Your cup shall run over. Just like the Hebrew boys, shag rang me, shag and I've been to go. They knew whether they died or lived, their faith would not falter or be altered by bowing down to a God that's also subject to God's will. Mm. Esther, 
knowing if she went before the king without request or acceptance from the king, she would die immediately. What if Job quit? Mm. What if Jonah gave up in the well? What if Jehoshaphat said, you know what? I can't. These too many on me. I'm sorry, Lord. I can't. No, but you can. And Jehoshaphat didn't quit. Job didn't give up no matter what it looked like. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they still went to the flames, but their enemies got burned up. Esther went straight on the behalf of Jesus Christ the King. She didn't go, she, she, she went on behalf of the Lord. Again, we know that Jesus exists and the Holy Spirit in one. So she went on behalf of God, the God they serve, the most high living God. And she did not get, she did not get killed. Why? Because God saved her and kept her like he can do you. So Daniel prayed despite of what they had against him, despite of that particular law. They was trying to conquer his religion. Don't let God conquer you. I mean, don't let the enemy conquer you. You are the conqueror. And that's why God sent an angel to shut the mouths of the lions. And allow the lions to crush the enemy. And their conspiracy. All of us have conspirators. All of us have persecutors. There are people that don't want us where we are. So they're going to pray against us. They're going to they're gonna, uh, pray on our lives. P-R-E-Y. They're going to look to devour us. But we must keep going forward in Jesus' name. Keep going, because you are going to the den. <sighs> oh God, our King, our King, God of everything. Are you still on here, Henry Campbell? Are you still on here, man of God? Woo! And we're getting ready to pray out of here. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. And while I wait, if there's anyone here tonight that have not totally submitted your life to the Lord, I mean totally, have not sold out for Jesus. Anyone who has backslidden or uh, needs an upgrade in their worship, amen, yes, the blood still works. Come, lift your hands and say, it's me, and I'll pray for you. Sometimes it takes time for God to do what God is going to do in our eyes. But once he does it on his time, it's going to be on time. If you rush things and you're not obedient to the word of the Lord, if you're not obedient to what he's telling you, you can lose everything. If Daniel wasn't obedient to God and still continued to worship him and still continued to pray, he got on the rooftop and still kept praying. And it didn't stop him. And when they say you're going into the den, oh God. He didn't know whether what to expect. But he knew that God would be on time in whatever it was. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, how excellent is thy name, Jesus. How excellent is thy name, Jesus. Oh, Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going.
going. Keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing. You're going in the den. There's an overflow for your life. God has it in control, in control. Yeah, sometimes it hurts. Sometimes you got to cry out. Sometimes it seems that there's no way around it. But you got to say, God, deliver me out of the hands of my enemies. And I thank you, Lord. Say, anyone has a prayer request on tonight, I'm just going to start praying as you put them up on the screen. As I see them, I'm going to pray. In La breka masikita yeketo na masata. Hmm. 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 Yes, Uta. Hmm. Suffer not a witch to live. Yes, ma'am. I'm so sorry. Yes, ma'am. Sorry about your uncle. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, as these people begin to put their prayers on here, we thank you for the word tonight, God. We thank you for your glory tonight, God. That they will keep going no matter what it looks like, no matter how hard it is, God. Lord, that they'll begin to understand, God, that your grace is, is given to the swift, not to the strong, God. But they will endure until the end with their faith, oh God. Lord, let them understand that they must keep going because they will go into the den. In the name of Jesus, will their faith keep them or will the lions devour them, Lord? Lord, let them think about that thing, God. Let them realize, God, there is none like you, God, in the world. None like you in Jesus' name. Father, we pray right now, Father, because we know the blood still works tonight, God. The blood still works and always will work, God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We pray right now, God, for the um, Funderburg family, God. Hallelujah. As they lay their uncle to rest, God, and their cousin, their nephew, their, their grandson, their grandchild, their child, their father. Lord, in Jesus' name, God, we ask that you cover them, God, and give them a peace, God, that surpasses all understanding right now, Father, in in Jesus' name. Cover Kimmy now, God. Father, she's connected to the family, Lord. Lord, rise them up, God, to know that in Jesus' name that they must be saved, God. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, they must love on you, God. In spite of this, Lord, that they must still continue to praise you. They'll still continue to bless your name. Lord, we know that it's hard and sometimes mourning is so difficult, God, and it seems like it take our life, God, but don't let it take their lives, God. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you, God. God. Father, we pray right now for Theodore Sanford in Jesus' name, God. We pray right now, God, that you come into his heart, God, and get, begin to stir him up, God. Let the Holy Spirit stir him up even now, God. We know there's no distance in the spirit in which, God, you cannot heal, you cannot move, you cannot shift, God. We cause a shifting into his life, God. We call a breakthrough into his life, God. In Jesus' name, Lord, that he is healed, God, that his mind is set free, God. Hallelujah, that he's been renewed, God, that he's been transformed, form out of the world, God, into the things of you, Lord. In Jesus' name, God, I speak it by faith, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray right now, God, for a daughter that's going back to college, oh God, in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, as you go, Father, Father, as we know that variant is rampant right now, Father, Lord, we call her protection to her daughter, God. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, as she heads back to the, to the, um, to the place, oh God, in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord. Lord, we thank you right now, God, that you will touch her mindset, God. Let her mindset be focused on you that when she does her work, that she can only do it by your grace, that she can pass every test, God, that she's going to make awesome grades, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God that everything that she has, everything that she needs financially, God, books, everything, God, you will pay it, God, in Jesus' name, oh God. So, God, we thank you tonight. We glorify your name, God, that you're going to do a turnaround in somebody's life tonight. 
that you're going to do a turnaround, God. Touch the students at Valdosta State University, God. Touch every student there, oh God, in Jesus' name, Lord. Send your angels to cover them, God. Hallelujah. Let no hurt, harm, and danger come upon them. In Jesus' name, Lord, touch right now, oh God. We glorify your name tonight, God, for you are great and greatly to be praised. For we call the blood of Jesus huh, to flow through the homes that are hearing tonight, God. We call the anointing oil to healing or to flow through the homes, God. There is somebody here that needs a healing oil tonight, God. Somebody that is broken, God. Not just infirmities of the body, but infirmities of the spirit. We call them to be healed now in Jesus' name. Lord, by your stripes, they are healed in Jesus' name. It's Abbasakataya. So, Lord, we thank you right now, Lord, that our lives, God, that people will see our lives for what they are, God, not just what we claim them to be, but see our lives as holy, oh, God. Those who have left holiness, let them come back to you, Lord. In those who are still holy now, God, let them rise up into you, God, to do a greater thing and greater work in you, oh, God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, we thank you right now, God. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you by praises. We honor you by our voice. We honor you by our tongues, God. That life and death is in the power of the tongue. And we call life unto your people, oh God. Life unto myself, oh God. In Jesus' name. Oh God, we love you. We love you, Lord. Let your resurgence of glory just flow right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now, right now. Do it, oh God. Do it, oh God. Do it, oh God. Let your heat flow. Do it, oh God. Lord, let them turn their eyes to you and no longer to man. Let them not care what man thinks, but care what you say. Oh God. Yes, Lord, my grace whew, is made sufficient in your weak place. Mm. Yes, Lord. Mm. I don't know who this is for. This may be a replay viewer. Praise God. But I see... The word struggle against the wind. Somebody is struggling against the wind. Somebody is struggling against the wind. It's just so strong. It's like struggle is like it's like wiggly. And it's like like you're going against the wind. Like you feel like you can't get far because of the wind. Mm. Jesus. Mm. Mm. Whoever this is, it's almost like, it sounds weird, but it's like you're going backwards and the wind is pushing you. When you're trying to push against the wind, like you don't want the wind in your face. It's like you, the wind is in your face. And you feel like that it's a, a, a um, it's just rough. Well, God said, if you turn around <laughs> and you look at me, you'll come with me, not away from me. When I'm blowing, when my wind is blowing, why do you turn your back to me and press against me when I'm trying to take you into a shifting place? I'm trying to shift you. I'm trying to shift you into greater things. The wind is not the bad thing. And I'm going to blow the wind because I'm trying to keep you from what's on the other side of the wind. Hmm. I, I don't, ooh, it's so strong. Somebody feel like they've just been pressing and pressing, but it's the wind, wind of God is saying, look, quit, quit pressing, quit, turn around.
out. Look at me. Let the wind flow. Let the wind flow. Just, just, just go with it. God said, just go with it. Go with it. Because I'm trying to keep you from the other side. Because if you press through and my wind release for two seconds, you're going to hit the other side. And you're going to be behind the curve. You're going to be behind it. The man of God was on the donkey, headed somewhere, and the donkey would not move. And, then, and he said, man, he kept beating up the donkey. And the donkey said, don't beat me up. I'm trying to save you. Don't you see the angel standing there? God has, he's trying to tell you there's an assignment he has for you. And you're trying to get over here to this that don't belong to you. You're trying to get over here that's going to tear you apart. And then you're going to wonder where God is. God, where are you? I don't know who this is for, but it's so heavy right now. That you've been having your back up against the wind. And God said, turn around, look at me. Come with me. Let the wind flow. Let it flow. Because I'm your Jehovah Ru'ah, your breath of life. So I resuscitate you now with the breath of life of Jesus. That you will stop looking back and stop trying to go, stop trying to be in places that you're not supposed to be. You wonder why this is tearing up, that's tearing up, this ain't happening, that ain't happening. Why my finances, why well, I know the Lord is just, he going to make a way. Well, honey, when you got out of line, you got a, you missed it. How many of you know when you stand in the line and you get out of the line and the line closes in, you can't come back and get in that spot. You just missed it. So get in alignment with the Lord tonight. Just like Daniel. And once you're in alignment, keep going because you're going into the den. Hallelujah. I pray that this has blessed somebody tonight. That word has blessed somebody tonight. 30 days. Mm, so I will see y'all again. I thank y'all for coming in. Thank you all for coming in. I welcome you to, to join on our Facebook page, um, Prayer Life Ministries International. I'm Prophetess Hope Hall, and my husband is Pastor Dexter Hall. And, uh, oh God. Yes, Lord. I'm going to be obedient. God is calling for somebody to be obedient. Somebody is being disobedient. God has told you to do something and you have not done it. Mm, Jesus. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Disobedience gets you nowhere fast. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. It gets you nowhere, really. So I also like our Facebook page, Prayer Life Ministries Facebook page. Um, subscribe, like, share, and hit the notification bell when you get in there. Get us get a thousand subscribers in there to hear the word of the Lord and just how great he is and how wonderful he is. And I thank you so much for spending this time with me. Until next Thursday, the blood still works. God bless you, and I love you with the love of Christ. You are a champion because the champion in you is Jesus Christ. 1 John 4, 4. I'm excited about your life in the next 30 days. Woo, Jesus! Mm -mm -mm. And for those who don't know, Watch the replay and all replay viewers. I love you. I love you the love of Christ. Watch it at the beginning and you'll know what the 30 days is about. God bless you. I love you. Love bullets. Bye.